live. I'm joined by, oh, you're on this side, actually. Joined by the lovely Coach Sharon. Yeah. Um, Today, we're going to be talking about how to change your nutrition as you age for maximal results. As always, before we get started, I'm going to tag everyone just in case anyone out there is remotely interested in this topic. Coach Sharon is about to drop some knowledge bombs on all of us. So I hope you are ready. Boom. All right. Everybody is tagged. So, uh, and as always, if you're watching, if you're here, feel free to drop a comment below, ask a question. Coach Sharon will be able to answer it for you. And hopefully I don't talk too much. <laughs> so, uh, so Sharon, what, as we say that title, like what's the first thought that comes to mind and like how to change your nutrition as you age for maximum results. First, maybe we start with the question, why does this matter? Like, why should you change your nutrition as you age? Isn't it the same from when you're a kid to when you're, you know, a young adult to an older adult or is it different? Wow, I can talk about this for a really long time. So I'm going to this <laughs> I a loaded question. Yeah, so <laughs> nutrition changes, our, our bodies change, right? Like we all know the basic anatomy. You're you're born with 300, 300 bones, and as you mature, they fuse and become 206, right? You have baby teeth, and you lose them, and they become adult teeth. Like So our bodies are changing, and there are studies, I don't remember how much, how many skin cells we slough off every day, right? So our bodies are changing constantly. And as we get older, and that's from child to adult, but also through the adult stages, our nutrition needs to change if we want to continue to perform at our best. And when I'm talking about performing at our best, I mean, in and outside of the gym, right? We spend most of our time outside. i I like the gym, but I spend most of my time outside of the gym, right? I'm working, I'm doing other things. I'm meeting with clients, having a, having a life. Um, so I need to find, everyone needs to find what works for them. So they perform the best in and outside of the gym. Some of that is your synapses in your brain. So if, if you're not fueling your body properly with food and drink, the synapses aren't firing properly. If you're not yeah. fueling your body properly with food and drink, you're not going to be either able to lift heavier or continue through your workout or try something new or uh, balance. I mean, everything is related. Of course. So along with that, um, I'll talk about as an adult, right? So uh, I'm going to assume that most people who are listening or watching or watching the replay, we're adults. In our 20s, you're right, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. Hopefully you live longer than that, but I'm going to go like 20s through 80s. And I'm going to start grouping them together. In your 20s, especially when you're older than in your 20s, you look back and I've heard a lot of my clients say, I can eat whatever I want and I, you know, my body still look good. Or I didn't need to sleep as much my body, and I still perform great. Right. Well, yeah, probably, maybe. Um, but look, like, look how you look now. So do you really mm -hmm. think that the way that you were eating in your 20s is doing you good now? Probably not. That doesn't mean that it, did, it didn't, but most probably not. So a lot of my clients, when I start working with clients, they ask, how much protein should I eat? How many carbs? Can I drink alcohol? Like all these questions. And there isn't one specific answer that's like a magic pill. Like there isn't sure. a fairy dust. There's not a magic pill. There right. is science and science drives a lot of what I'm going to say. But in general terms, when I start working with my clients, I set them up with um, a certain amount of from a macro standpoint. So macros, in case you aren't 100 percent clear on what macros are, calories are um, you look at your total calories coming in per day. And they can be divided into three macros. There are carbohydrates, which are not the enemy. There's protein and there's fat. And eating fat doesn't necessarily make you fat. Okay. And there's also, this is not a macronutrient, but it does contribute to carbohydrates. It's alcohol. So if you're going to say alcohol is not a macro, no. I know <laughs> who knew, like when I was younger, I was at the bottom of the food pyramid. <laughs> well, I was certain that if I drank 
something like a fuzzy navel, it was healthy, right? Because there was orange juice in it. Now it had alcohol, but I'm like, but no, no, but there's orange juice. No, my Sunday mimosas are like, you know, I'm getting vitamin C. (laughs) I know, like who knew, like shocker, right? So when you look at the macronutrients, I generally start all my clients at a certain percent of this and certain percent of that and certain percent of that. And then we see how they do over the next few weeks, right? Because you can do something for a day and that's good. But until you do it for a week or two and see how your body responds, we we don't want to start changing all these things because we don't know what's working. So anyway, all right. So from a nutrition standpoint for performance, if you eat too many simple carbs, simple carbs are basically sugars, glucose. Simple carbs have like two, one or two um, <clears throat> carbohydrates like glucose, uh, sucrose, anything that ends in OSE. That's one example anyway. They make you crave more of the same thing. Mm -hmm. So when Ryan, when coach Ryan or or I say, I want you to increase more carbs, we're most probably saying, I'm not telling you not to eat the sugar carbs, but if you're going to start increasing something, we want you to eat complex carbs because they're going to fuel your body better. And when you're at a young age, you may not need as much of them. When you get older, you may need more or less. It all depends on where you are in your life. I'm going to talk about facts that I think that's easier to differentiate. Go ahead, Ryan. I was going to say, before we hop to facts too, a couple comments came in, a couple highs. Hey, <laughs> if you have any questions for Coach Sharon, feel free to uh, feel free to ask away. Love for these to be interactive. I also have quite a few questions for you too. Um, I, I just want to restate some things really quick for people maybe that are just joining. So a main thing that I'm getting so far is test and iterate is key, right? Like, as you said, you might start yourself or a client off at a usual percentage, whether it be, you know, if we're talking about the percentage of calories from fat, carbs, protein, you know, 30%, 40%, 40%, or that wouldn't equal uh, 30%, 35%, 35%. <laughs> For a second, I was just changing the math. Um, but it's really test and iterate. Hey, what happened based on what happened determines what we do next and tweak, 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 where kind of what we, we might even said this last week where uh, test and iterate or uh, guess and check is almost even more impactful than a perfect design, meaning, you know, from day one. Is that fair to say? Yeah. What, you know, patience is a virtue. Didn't Charlie Brown or someone say that? I don't know. I'm apparently, I'm not not a patient person either. However, when you start making changes to your diet, and and when I use the word diet, diet is a noun. It's the food and the drink Mm -hmm. that you're putting into your body. I, I teach lifestyle. So if someone says, well, I want to do a diet that has an end date. I don't want an end date, right? I want this to be a lifestyle. So anyway, when you're, when you're making changes to your diet and we set certain macros, we need to give your body time mentally and physically to start using those, um, those new macros from a, from a mental standpoint, you need to get used to thinking of food that way. I'm not saying Mm -hmm. that you're going to, some of my, my clients and my friends kid with me, they, put a plate of food and instead of seeing chicken, like I just see protein, how many grams of protein in that? Right. They see sweet yeah. potato, like how many grams of carbs in that? I don't mean that way. I mean, thinking about it, it's in, Hey, I need to make sure I have protein X amount of protein with every meal, something like that. Sure. Okay. So we, we set up your goals, your targets, it, and it's going to take someone a few days to hit them. Even if they hit them on the first day, the second and the third, they're not going to hit them. I mean, because you're, you're human, right? And and things sure. happen. But over a week or two or three or however long it is, we see how your body reacts to it, right? Do you still have energy throughout the day, or do you hit a do you hit a wall at three p.m.? Does that mean mm-hmm. that you need to eat more? Maybe, probably not. We just need to move your food around a little bit and see how it works based on your lifestyle and your work schedule and your home life. That's a good point. There's this, there's the differentiate, uh, dif- what's the word, delineation? I can't think of the exact word, but there's a difference. <laughs> and I'm whipping out the $3 yeah. words this morning. Yeah. Um, there is a difference between, we'll say, 
energy from food and physical energy, like how you feel, right? Because calories, of course, are energy, but how we feel usually gets lumped into the same word, energy. I have energy or I don't. And right, oh, I don't have energy, I need to eat more, but that's not necessarily the case. Yep. It could actually be the fact that we're eating more, which is why we have feel less energy as we get more lethargic and so on after a you know heavy meal, but not to cut too far away, but that's an interesting uh, distinction. So after we after we track food for a while, then we start making changes, and and it's a it's a like a a group decision, right? And I'm not going to sit here and say you need to eat twelve and a half grapes at three p.m. <laughs> the question is, hey, if, that's the answer. Yeah, that's the you know if you're not eating your twelve and a half grapes, I know. What are you doing? <laughs> I know, and and I I I like a, when I talk with clients when I work with clients saying this is what I see. How do you want to get there? Because if, if mm. someone buys into it, they're much more likely to try it, stick with it and believe it's going to work. than if I just sure. say, this is what you need to do. Now I, I probably know what they need to do. I, I'm not saying always, but I probably know what they need to do, but me telling them it's just, it's not going to get there. That's a, such a great point. Um, I, you know, it's funny. I've had a, you know, I think we all, as coaches, we've all had clients in the past where uh, sometimes, you know, they, they, and I actually can say, you know, having a coach multiple times in my life, I fall into the very same boat where I'm like, just tell me what to do. Just tell me what to do. Like, tell me the answer. Tell me the answer. But it's interesting because a key part to adherence, which is what, like, if we go high level and zoom out from all this stuff, the most important thing is that whatever you're, whatever's on the plan, you actually do it. Right. Because yeah. you can have a 100 percent dialed in plan that is locked into your genetic code and that is like designed to get you the best results ever. But if you only do it 50 percent, you're better off with a plan that's 90 percent as effective that you do 100 percent of. Yeah. So, yeah, like at, at the at the core of this whole thing, it, it always comes back to adherence. That's a, that's a really great point. So so getting back to the food, let's let's talk a little bit about fats. So as let me explain what fats are to make sure everyone kind of understands. Um, so the, the the media has grabbed a, over the last several years has, has grabbed a hold of healthy fats. OK, so I'm going to use healthy fats and unhealthy fats. So I'm not telling you that you should never eat an un, what I'm about to loosely call an unhealthy fat. I'm not saying that you shouldn't eat ice cream or cookies or cake or whatever. Do I think there are alternatives that will satisfy your chocolate cravings and every other craving that you have? Absolutely. I like chocolate and peanut butter. I have them every day. Okay. And, mm. but I, the way that I get my chocolate and the way that I, what I do with my peanut butter, it fits with my lifestyle. It satisfies my cravings and I'm happy, right? I get chocolate and peanut butter every day. Right. So from a healthy standpoint or from a fat standpoint, the healthy, per se, the healthy fats could be avocados, um, olive oil, nuts and nut butters. So I'm going to talk a little bit about nuts and nut butters. A lot of people mm -hmm. say that they are good sources of protein. They are not. They are sources of protein if you use natural. And I'll touch on that in a minute, too. Mm -hmm. But they, those are fats. If you look at the if you take a jar of, let's say, natural peanut butter, Turn it around, look at the label on the back. Each brand is a little different, but in general, the serving size is two tablespoons. The calories are 180. You're going to get 16 grams of fat. You'll probably get eight or more, let's say eight grams of protein and maybe a gram of carb. Okay. So if you look at that, the majority, the vast majority of the calories are fats. All right. Like Not no, right now that you can't get protein from it, but it is not a main of protein. Yeah. So when when a lot of people say, well, I like peanut butter, I like almond butter or cashew butter, eat it. Know that it's calorically dense. That means that if you eat this much and that's like two tablespoons it has about this many calories compared to chicken or anything else. OK. Mm. When someone talks about natural, so if you're going to have peanut butter, or I, I use that generically. It could be almond butter or cashew butter or whatever. If you're going to have a nut butter, I want you to walk past the Jif and the Skippy and all those others in the um, aisle. Now, I grew up on those, so I'm not saying they're bad. 
but if you eat natural, it's much better for you. And you know that it's natural where there are either one or two ingredients. One is the nut, you know, peanuts, almonds, whatever. The second is it, they may add a little bit of salt. If they add oil or anything else, it is not natural. Regardless of what it says on the front of the label, that is not true. When you have just the nuts or salt with the nuts, it, um, it produces its own oil. So if you buy a jar of it, take note of this. Like you should take a piece of paper and write this down. When you open the jar, pull out your spoon or your knife and stir it, stir it, stir it. And you're trying to pull everything up from the bottom to incorporate the oil. Once it's completely incorporated, and I mean top to bottom, seal it. And I say this because you don't want to clean this up. Seal it, turn it upside down, stick it in your fridge. That allows the oil to stay like throughout it. And then when you open it up again, you don't have the wrist workout of your life trying to get the, the butter out of it. And you don't waste the peanut butter or almond butter at the bottom. So that's my trip of the day. That is an interest. I've never heard that. Wow. Really? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm learning too. I don't eat a lot of peanut butter, but, or a lot of butters, but I will ask you this, uh, two questions. First one is, I know you said, you know, when you're going to buy peanut butter, always buy natural because it's healthier. Why is it healthier? The, the other brands, whether they're Jif, I, I use Jif and Skippy interchangeably. Like it could right, be, super any, popular. It could be Peter Pan or, or your local grocery. Anything your local, that tastes good. No, yeah, your local, <laughs> right. Your local grocery, whether it's Kroger or Publix or Walmart, they're going to have their brand of processed peanut butter. And then most likely their brand of natural peanut butter, because they're realizing that consumers are getting just a little smarter and we're not going to fall for eating peanut butter, even though they say, Hey, this is like, it says mom's best peanut butter. You should eat this on the front label. Right. right. So they add, they can add sugar, they can add oil and then they can add a whole bunch of other things that you may recognize in the ingredient label, but you don't need like why. And I, I am not an organic I don't have my own garden. I don't buy organically necessarily. I'm not vegan. I'm not vegetarian. So like I eat meat, but I'm telling you, go eat the natural products. They are better for you. They have simple ingredients and you don't need that other stuff. It's just going to take away from the actual nutrition. So yeah, I believe the, that that main oil you're referring to is the hydrogenated, hydrogenated, am I saying that it right? Is. Hydrogenated oils. Why is that destructive? Like why, why wouldn't we want that or any of the other oils or anything like that? It, is all oil made equal? Yeah, right. It, it is not. Um, so the, the nuts themselves. So one time, like a lot of people think that I cook a lot. I meal prep. I don't cook, right? There's a, my mom can cook great. My dad can cook great. I meal prep. But one day I decided. Sounds like me. Yeah. One day I decided, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to make my own nut butter. I want to see what happens. So this is several, several years ago. So I pull out the food processor and I had bought um, a bag of, I prefer peanut butter, but I, I didn't have roasted peanuts in the house, but I had yeah. almonds cause I, I'll, I'll eat some almonds. So I, it, and they're um, just basic almonds, not chocolate covered almonds, just regular almonds. Okay. So I took the almonds and, and I put them in the food processor and I started to try to blend it. And then after all, I'm like pulsing and it, like, it felt like it took forever. Like I said, I'm, I'm not very patient. So I'm like doing this and, and make it up. Yeah. The food processors make that noise and right. It's going on and on and on. So finally it starts to blend and I'm watching it I'm like, oh my gosh, it really does produce its own oil. This is so cool because I, I didn't add anything to it. I didn't even add salt because I wanted to see what it tastes like. Yeah. Now, if you decide to make this, I mean, it's simple. You get your food processor, you get a bag or whatever, and you dump it in and you just keep playing with it. Now, I realized that by the time, because it was the first, the only time that I did it, but it was the first time I did it, I could have driven to the local grocery, bought enough jars of peanut butter, and just came home by the time it got finished. However, so if you want to try it, like try it, it's good. It tastes great. And it really lets you understand that this is all natural and the other oils are hydro, hydron, hydronated. Now you have me saying it. Um, and yeah. other oils that they have other, I don't remember all the details. You think I would know the top of my head, 
they have other properties in them that just aren't as good for you from a health standpoint. So if you're going to eat mm. peanut butter, like go enjoy, just have the better choice of it. And I think most of what we do, it comes down to choices, what you eat or what you do, or even how you think it's either going to bring you closer to reaching your goal or pull you further away. So if it's peanut butter, why pull yourself further away? It's such an easy thing to just get the natural and so enjoy it. Yeah, I feel like that's a great point, what you just said. I feel like uh, it's very much human nature to want the, uh, what can I say, the uh, the one trick. You know, give me the thing. Like, what is the answer? But the fact of the matter is, every decision we make is a vote for the person that we want to become. And either we're voting for, you know, away from the person we want to become right. or voting in alignment to the person we want to become. There is no one choice you make that seals your fate. Right. It is the accumulation of choices. And I will be 100% honest with anybody that ever asked me. I eat garbage. You know, not like, not like the garbage, <laughs> what, what's, not, what's, what, not like the grouch on Sesame Street. But like last night, I'll give you an example. I had a, a bag of popcorn, movie theater butter, and I had a two, uh, they, they were like reduced fat. They were like uh, the Nikki's ice cream bars. Now, if you look at my nutrition for the second half of that Sunday, you'd look at me and go, you're a coach? You should be ashamed of yourself. But if you zoom out and you look at my nutrition over the last 14 days, you'll notice that 92% or higher of the choices I've made have aligned with what maybe you would imagine a coach would be or an optimal, healthy human being. So, you know, and I, I'll tell you what, I ate that stuff. I felt good. And I started today with no guilt and ready to rock. So it's fine to eat those things. It's just what percentage are you eating? Uh, Sharon, I had another question for you too, because I know you said you get your chocolate and peanut butter every day. Was that an exaggeration or do you, do you uh, get that? Okay. So what is, what do you do for that? Are you just working it into your macronutrient profile and you're eating chocolate and peanut butter or are you having substitutes? Are you, how are you, how are you working through that craving every day? What are you doing? Um, I use, I use protein powder a lot. So for my chocolate, I'll either use my vanilla or my chocolate protein powder. So let me back up. So there are a lot of protein powders out, out on the market. And in full disclosure, I have my own line of supplements and I'm not here to sell anyone on my line of supplements. Of course, I'll give you information if you're interested, but that's not why I'm, I'm talking about this. But I have, mine tastes really good. I mean, that's why I went to this manufacturer. It tastes really good and it's really good for you. So why not get your chocolate and your vanilla like this? So anyway, I make a lot of things with protein powder and I make from pancakes and puddings to ice creams and all sorts of things. And then I will add natural nut butter on top or mix it in or whatever I'm making. So every day, my last meal, or at least one of the meals that I have a day is chocolate. It has chocolate and peanut butter somewhere in there. Or I have peanut butter earlier in the day and chocolate at night. I get, that's how I satisfy my craving. And I've learned, well, this is, this is like science. Your, your body is going to crave what you eat. I, I'm not saying that you're not going to have a craving for pizza one day if you don't eat pizza all the time or chocolate or ice cream or beer or something crunchy, like whatever. You're still going to have those cravings. But in general, once you start feeding your body, let's say the foods that, that are going to help you have energy throughout the day and sleep better at night and all those kinds of things that we started talking about at the beginning of the podcast. Once you start doing that on a regular basis, when you eat a, a meal that like Ryan may have planned for what he talked about, but I call it an, it's a planned meal. It's just off plan. Sorry. My, I have Huskies and they want to go out right now. I can hear it. I see them jumping. Like you can't, <laughs> They are jumping up and down. So, oh, it's so cute. So they, um, so eating something off plan, he planned for it though, okay? His body, he knows what he can eat. So he physically feels okay the next day, right? 
And as we get older, that's going to change, right? Because I've done it. My clients have done it. It changes. When we eat those foods that we've been craving, it's not uncommon for someone to eat it and go, <laughs> just tell me I'm down. Just think, oh my gosh, like that doesn't taste as good as I remember it. Or I just didn't enjoy it as much. So when I eat my chocolate and peanut butter, whatever it is, I enjoy it. I feel great. I'm still totally on plan. So if I want to eat something off plan, I still have that option. And I'm happy. So that's what I do. Oh, cool. Two, two questions there. First one is going to be what your exact ingredients are. Because, uh, yeah, I hear you. Like, I've had some protein powders and like, oh, my God, I'm gagging, you know, trying to do any type of combination with it. Like, absolutely terrible. And then the other. Uh, so I definitely want to know that. But, yeah, the other thing's really interesting, which we can make a whole podcast about microbiome and how literally the things that you eat, you crave more of simply because when you eat something it creates or creates it you have a microbiome which in your microbiome 90 percent of the living cells in your body aren't yours they are like digesting your food in your gut it's insane and when you eat something your body creates more or doesn't necessarily create but your body uh has more of those specific bacteria that feed on the thing that you eat so when you crave something, you're right, through the vagus nerve, we have our stomach connected to our brain. It's extremely I'm interesting. I'm taking care of that, by the way, just so you know. Someone is coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The doc. Just so you know. But it's it's super interesting to think that our cravings may not be ours. Meaning, you, uh, it's a loose description of what you is. If the cells that are did not originate from you in your gut are you consider you then yes that's your craving but it could be a craving that technically it's not even yours per se it's just the the, the cells living inside of you which i know sounds really weird and yeah. but that is what new evidence is, is suggesting which is really powerful to think about meaning there is some truth to the idea that yes if you eliminate sugar right not saying you do this but if you were to eliminate it for two weeks your craving for sugar reduces why that's a huge reason why yep. finishing this up sharon what is your concoction at night? Is it like a tablespoon peanut butter, a tablespoon protein powder? What are the macros? Talk me through it. How does it taste? Scale of one to 10. Give me the real, real. You know, I make a whole lot of different things with my protein powder. Like seriously, I, I make give it. Give me the time. things you like. So I'll give one. I, I, and my clients I work with, I give, <laughs> I say, hey, here, start with these three and tell me what you like. And then we'll build okay. on it from there. So actually I'll, I'll tell everyone what I tell my clients. The, Okay. two or three that I tell them to start, I suggest that they start with, of course, use my protein powder. So you, you mix, um, click the link in the bio. No, just kidding. <laughs> the link in the bio. Um, yeah. so, so by the way, so each protein powder is different, not just by brands, but the quality of the protein. So what I'm going to talk about works for mine and, and, I, and I, I'm not giving my name or anything like that, but just know that, I'm talking about a whey protein, a high quality whey protein, or even a high quality vegan protein. Casey and I enjoy also, but I'm not talking about that in this right now. Okay. So you can take, um, here are two that you can, my, my goal, one of my goals is when I eat, I want to not have a whole lot of cleanup. I don't want to have a whole lot of prep time. I want it to taste good. And if it could be portable or easy to take to work, like I want that kind of thing. So these two meet those criteria. Oh, and they, and taste good and be nutritious, of course. Okay. So if you take a high protein, low fat yogurt, like a Kroger Carb Master or a Too Good, that's T-W-O good. The, the size of that yogurt is about this big. It's like six or eight ounces. It's tiny. I like them, both of them, because the amount of calories that is in this and based on that the amount of protein which is high and sugar which is really low that's why i say those two those two brands okay so you take one of those and you're going to have to use another bowl don't try to mix this in the little yogurt container because it's going to get messy and yes i have to tell people that because well because people try to mix it in the little yogurt container it gets messy 
So you can even use a disposable bowl. Take a bowl, dump the yogurt in, and it comes in all different flavors. So get whatever bunch of flavors that you like. Take a scoop of protein, the entire scoop. Mix it into the yogurt. You can either eat it immediately cold or you can stick it in the fridge or even in the freezer. Once you find the flavor, so you can mix. If you have chocolate and vanilla protein and then you have six different yogurt flavors, mix and match until you find the ones that you like. So even if you eat it every day, it's like you're eating something different because it has a different flavor. Nutritional powerhouse, easy, quick. You can make them ahead of time, fridge, freezer, whatever. The other okay. one is um, in a microwave safe bowl. And yes, I have to tell people this. Take half a, this will depend on your macros, but I'll give the, the, the general one. You're going to take half a cup of oatmeal, and that's the in the canister, the old-fashioned oats. The rolled oats. The rolled oats. Now, those can be generic. They don't have to be Quaker. I buy generic. Nutritionally, they're the same. And in fact, if you see that Quaker has the American Heart Association badge on it, and maybe your local grocery doesn't, but if you turn them around and everything on the nutrition label is the exact same, it's because Quaker paid to get that on there. And the Marketing. local grocery said, we're just as good, but we're not going to spend the money to pay the AHA to put this out. There. We're just as good, but we're not going to pay you to tell We're you not going to pay to put the label on. And that's that's the that's truth. Funny. You have to pay for that certification. You have to pay for every certification, gluten-free, whatever. You have to pay for it all. Okay, so, um, so in your bowl, half a cup of oatmeal, add some water, stick it in your microwave. Now, every person, your microwave is different. Most, most of the large microwaves are 1,100 to 1,200 watts. Yours may be older, may be smaller. So this is trial and error, okay? And the amount of water you put in there will change the amount of time that's in the microwave. And the bowl that you use is going to change in the microwave. So if you use a ceramic bowl one day and a paper bowl the next, don't think it's the same amount of time or you're going to end up cleaning a messy microwave. All right. So anyway, bowl, oatmeal, water, stick it in the microwave. Let's say for about 45 seconds. I don't know. It's your microwave. Pull it out. Take an entire scoop of protein. Dump it in. Add more water. Now this water is, to, is going to be to your consistency. Some people like it kind of soupy. Some people like it more baked. That's totally up to you. And so based on that, that's how long you're going to put it back in the microwave. Okay. Whatever you like, write it down because you will not remember the next day. I'm telling you right now, write it down. <laughs> now you can eat it as is. It's warm. It's filling. Nutritional powerhouse. You can even add some cinnamon to it. Mix it up. So eat it now. Put it in the fridge if you want it cold or put it in the freezer if you want it later. There you go. Nice. And it, and it fulfills your craving of chocolate and peanut butter. Yeah, you can add peanut butter to it. You can add nuts. You can add fruits. It all depends on what your macros are and what you like. So those are the bases, the two base, the yogurt base and the oatmeal base. And then you can add nuts, nut butter, fruit, whatever. I like it. Very nice. There well, um, there might be following this. There might be a couple recipes that come from this. You never know. Um, we'll keep you guys updated. As we finish out, uh, for those that are watching, are there any comments, questions for uh, Coach Sharon or myself that we can help answer? We'll stay on for another 30 seconds. And uh, while we do that, I just want to point out that the light hitting my teeth right now makes them look way whiter than they are in person. Wow. <laughs> I look like, a, what is the uh, what is the commercial where they- like, The gum, like, the gum. Is it the gum commercial? Yeah, yeah. or, get, or something like- thing. Yeah. I'd be ready. Just like hit me in this light. I'm ready for a gum ad. It's got to be this lighting though. Um, but this was great. I, I appreciate as always, uh, Coach Sharon, you taking the time for this. Um, you know, the reason we make these podcasts at all and take the time out of, uh, out of the day is to whether or not you're a one-on-one -on -one client with us or not to help you transform your body and sustain it forever. That's why this group exists. Our mission, I know we're not gonna be able to achieve it this year. Even this decade might even be a stretch. But we wanna impact 100,000 registered nurses and healthcare workers. So you guys being here, watching, tuning in, liking this video, sharing it, it's great. Uh, helps us achieve the mission. And if you're at all interested in working with Coach Sharon or anyone on our coaching team, I'll drop a link 
where you guys can apply to work with us. Anything else before we finish out, Coach Sharon? No, uh, my Huskies awesome. say goodbye and sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> no worries at all. We'll see you guys later this week. Bye.